What is up, everybody? Welcome back. We are back, finally. Welcome back to another episode of Chicken Bowl and Alley, brought to you by Earl Ramey Racing Engines, SRI Performance, Stock Car, Steel and Aluminum, RK Motorsports Consulting, Profab Headers, and Exhaust. What is up? I am, I, I'll, I'll announce myself, you know, officially now. I'm driver of the Lucky 13 Motorsports, number 13, David Rogers. And I am the spotter for Lucky 13 driver. <laughs> What's your name? Landon. <laughs> you forgot that part? Yeah, I, I forgot my name. Oh. We are back from a uh, good Memorial Day week. Mm-hmm. Landon got all done with school in the meantime. Finally. They called a day, said, you, said a math book wasn't turned in. I'm all my books turned in. Uh oh. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway. So what you doing? Uh I was nothing much really. You're here standing up like a rooster. Yeah, I can be classified as a rooster sometimes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> He's been in there with Jackson today. Jackson well. Jackson was in here a little earlier. Jackson didn't feel good, so I stayed home from work. But then he acted like he was feeling better because Kayla's got to work today in the barn, and she's off, I think, like Wednesday and the rest of the week. And and in the meantime, she celebrated a birthday over, you know, since the last time we had a podcast. So happy belated birthday on here to my <laughs> lovely wife, Kayla. <laughs> um. And uh, what else happened? Like I said, Memorial Day happened. Hope everybody had a wonderful Memorial Day week. Hope all everybody's graduations and stuff have gone well and uh, all that fun stuff. And we've raced a couple times since since uh, since we were on here last. I guess we uh, ran. Dylan last weekend, um, that was Memorial Day weekend. We ran Dylan. Um, had a good race then. We finished finished fourth that week. Yeah, you did finish fourth, and that was because of me. Was that yeah. what it was? Yeah. That was your first official week as spotter. Yes, and if it wasn't for me, you know, you would have placed fourth and a half. Oh. Uh. Well, yeah, so got fourth, getting a little little faster in the car, getting, figuring out a few things on it, and um, like I said, we didn't get as much practice last time because we uh, are at Dillon, because come in, had a vibration one time, found actually just a buildup of rubber in, in the wheel, so... So we'll see. But, uh, so got that all cleaned up. Um, <laughs> can't draw for heat race. Dylan runs heat races. So got over there. I drew 10th out of, how I many was it, 14? Yes, sir. I think, yeah, that week. And for the heat race, uh, it's only seven laps. Made our way up to 6th. I think it was. I think so. Um. So that was it was pretty good heat race. Started six in the main there. Uh, made it up to fourth in the race. Uh, first well leader checked out from everybody. He was just gone gone, but. Just need a little better track position. Need a little better restarts when we had restarts. Um, car in front of me couldn't get going every time. I just couldn't couldn't get a real good restart. If I'd have had better track position, I think we could have. I think we had a car that was fast enough for a second. Just couldn't get around them. So it's all, but it was all good. Like I said, I'd take home a fourth any day. Um, but this week. Went over to Florence Motor Speedway. 
uh, or this past weekend, went to Florence Motor Speedway. Uh, practiced, you know, practiced pretty decent, practiced fifth. We were obviously a fifth place car. We practiced fifth. We qualified fifth. We ran fifth. <laughs> <laughs> so fifth is where we were all day. Um, it's just tire issue. We just need some tires. Need tires bad. Better tires. We just need new tires. tires. We just need new tires bad. Can't, we can't get them. The teams, all, all four teams that ran in front, front well, they're one big team. Uh, all four of them uh, all had a brand new set of tires on their car. I saw them put them on there. So, eh, here's what it is. I ain't going to complain about it. We all run on the same track. just stinks when I can't get tires and everybody else got them over there. Or well, not everybody else, but, you know, when the big teams get them. But that is what it is. That's... That's the deal that everybody's dealing with in the sport right now. But Landon had kind of a boring time this week on, on the spotter stand, I reckon. I did. I just had to clear. <laughs> one time. Yeah, one time. So. No, you did a couple of times. Because you did it again. We had one restart with like three laps oh, to go. Yeah. One restart. Only one, though. Yep. Which I'm, I'm not complaining about. Um. And we, it was actually one of the guys spun out in front of me, but uh, he managed somehow to get right back up where he was quickly. <laughs> I don't know mm-hmm. how he got up there. He was I think he passed some um, under caution, I think. That's what it sounded like. It's what I heard. So, I don't know. But, uh, so, managed a fifth place run there. Some good action over there. Um, you know, is what it is. But but we'll uh, we'll go on to the next one. I think we're going to try to run Dillon Motor Speedway again this weekend. Coming. So, in my area, come on out to Dillon Motor Speedway. Come hang out with us. You'll see Landon running back and forth to the spotter stand up there. Yeah, you'll see me running, but don't try to catch up. Why not? Because they just won't. I'll be gone. <laughs> you, can, you can give them a Chicken Bone Alley sticker or something. Or a Lucky 13 Motorsport sticker now. We got some of them. I will. On the way, I'll just throw it at them. Oh. <laughs> that's what you're going to do. So, going to head over there, try our luck again at Dillon Motor Speedway, make a few adjustments on what we had last time, because we were close last time. We just need a little more. Um, So, make a few adjustments on that, and I think we'll be good to go. I think we'll be good, too. Hopefully we can get a better draw for heat race. Better than 10. That that would be nice. It's tough starting way back there. It's tough to pass. Over. I mean, I like it. I like I like driving Dylan, honestly, uh, just because there's multiple lines. Um, and we can – car ain't working in one line. You can kind of move around and make it work a little better and still run competitive time. And we did uh, – we changed gear in the car this past week, so – uh, that helped us a lot at Florence. So hopefully that'll help us at Dillon even more. I think that because we were we were hitting rev limiter pretty hard there last time. So guys, a guys a little lower gear in there and get ready to roll with it. But uh, all right, it's time to go to uh, the phone for the first one tonight. This is Hot Laps, presented by SRI Performance, stock car, steel, and aluminum. All right, ladies and gentlemen, time for this week's Hot Laps, as you just heard. This week on the phone from stock car, steel, and aluminum, we got Mr. Adam Richardson. Adam, what is going on, my man? Oh, just another beautiful Monday in the Wild West. There you go. There you go. That's what I like to hear what i like to hear and that's uh it's, it is it is them wild west days in the in the racing industry right now for some reason as a whole everybody's out to get everybody i think is that the way it seems <laughs> i do believe so i mean we got a ton of restrictions in the supply across multiple avenues and and it's just making for tough business these days <laughs> it is it definitely is i was literally just talking about that more on the uh, tire side because I know you're talking about restrictions. Woo! Well, I, I have a legend car, and uh, I, I'm running a set of tires on it right now. I think they're a little over a year old. 
We don't know how many races <laughs> because we can't get any. So, yeah, fun. <laughs> Super fun. Super fun. But regardless of all that, we know even with restrictions, I see every day uh, or, you know, a good bit online on, on social media and everything that uh, that Stock Car Steel still got any and everything that not only racers need, but anybody in the fabrication industry will need. But let's get started with you first, Adam. Adam, tell us a little bit about you, kind of introduce yourself, where you're from, and uh, what is your position there at Stock Car Steel? Well, I am from Mooresville, North Carolina, about two miles from Stock Car Steel. I've had it made in the shade with my commute to work. And uh, I started Stock Car Steel in 06. I uh, started in the warehouse. You know, just being a guy that pulls the orders, truck orders, UPS, eBay's, and uh, so on and so forth, and just kind of gradually moved up in the business since then. You know, I started being a truck driver. I uh, did that for a couple years until I moved into sales, and then uh, moved my way into purchasing, and then I guess you can say that's where my job got really hard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seeing as the last two years uh, has just been – you know, extremely tricky, you know, to get our hands on material, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I've landed in purchasing. That's where I am now and, uh, where I'll be for the foreseeable future. Well, good deal, man. You just wanted to get out of that hot warehouse, didn't you? I, I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. I need to see some AC, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I hear you there. I hear you there for sure, man. Well, cool. Um, well that, that is good because, and I always like it when people like yourself, you know, move up in the, in the, in the business because it just seems like you, you really know the ins and outs of the business by the time you get to, to the upper levels of the business, I guess we'll say. Um, so, uh, how long were you in the, uh, in the warehouse out there? I wasn't in there about a year, year and a half before I got into a truck, started delivering. Okay. And, uh, you know, that was, you know, delivering was, was honestly probably, you know, one of my favorite jobs at Stock Car Steel, just being that I got to deliver to all the race teams, you know. So, I mean, it was, you know, you was in Hendrick every day. You was in Joe Gibbs every day and in Michael Waltrips, you know, once upon a time. And, uh, you know, DEI uh, once upon a time and and, uh, and Roush and all the big name boys and stuff like that. And seeing that, man, and seeing what, how those, you know, cars were built and just how everybody got ready for races and stuff, man. I mean, that was I was a young man then, dude. It was it was a real cool <laughs> job, you know. <laughs> oh, I bet so. I always thought, you know, being a race fan myself for years and years and years, and being involved in racing a little bit, you know, lower levels, and uh, I've always thought about that myself. When I got certain jobs, I'm like, man, it'd be cool to to do something like that and and go around to these race teams and stuff and just see how you know, be in the shop every once in a while and see things getting built and all that stuff. Just because it's always interested me and and I know uh, you being delivering and stuff as you were, um, you got to see some of that for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. It was a a great thing, man. It was a great thing. And then uh, and then a sales position opened up, you know. So I mean, uh, I found myself in that, wanted to take on a bigger role and and you know start peddling a lot of this this commodities that we sell, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, working in the warehouse and delivering the material and hands-on with it every day and stuff like that really helped in, in me being able to sell the material as well, you know. I mean, uh, kind of knowing what the guys bought on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, uh, just from loading it and touching it and filling it. And, you know, it it really came naturally, really, at the end of the day uh, when, when I did land in sales. Exactly, and that's what... And, uh, 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 that, that's what I was going to say is that's what people like to hear when you are in sales is you've been hands on with this stuff. You're not just looking in a book and, and, uh, you know, reading, reading the words out of it, what it says on there. You, yeah. you know, you know what you got out there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I can take you right to it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And and just know it by looking at it. That, that's I know what it is over there. So, uh, yes, sir. So that's cool. Um, yeah, that's cool, man. And uh, so moving from sales, how how did you decide to uh go from sales to purchasing? I mean, well, they, you know, Greg, Jim, and you know, sat down with me and and offered me the opportunity, and you know, I thought long and hard about it and stuff like that, and and figured it would good be. I mean, 
Well, I'd have to say, I, you know, I, I said yes to the question, you know, you know, taking the position, you know, before any of the, you know, market turbulence started to happen, I guess you could say, right. you know, so, <laughs> so in hindsight, <laughs> it might've been all right to stay in sales, but you know, it's, it's, it's been, it's been tough, man. I mean, it's uh, been one of those things where it's trial by fire, I guess you could say, you know what I mean? And, and I wish you could go to somebody for advice, but, but honestly speaking, man, I mean, nobody, ne nobody's ever experienced what we've experienced the last two years and in this broken supply chain, you know, and I mean, it's from, you know, nuts, bolts, tires, you know, cream cheese at the grocery store to, right. to all the metals and such as well, man. And I mean, in a lot of ways, we've had to, to forecast, you know, uh, just a long ways out, you know, I mean, there's some stuff that we buy, man, we're not going to see for, you know, upwards of 15 months. Wow. You know, That's and crazy. I mean, it's just, it's a hard thing to forecast, you know, and I mean, just everything's operating at historically high prices, you know, and it just seems like it keeps going up more and more. And, uh, and the more you see fuel go up, the more, you know, you're going to see metal go up. And, uh, and I mean, those two lines kind of follow suit with each other, uh, across the board with aluminum, steel, you know, chrome molly and such. Uh, but you know, just super long forecasting is what we've really, you know, kind of just boiled it all down to, you know, I mean, eventually we're going to get it. I mean, eventually y'all going to need it. So, I mean, we're just going to buy it and know that it's not going to come in for a, a good while and just try to find some to carry us over until we do get it, you know? Uh, it's been your smaller diameter, you know, tubes, you know, your, your fender bracing items per se. I got you. You know, those real small diameter, three sixteenths, quarter inch, three eighths and real light walls. So 35 walls, you know, that material, you know, mills just don't want to touch with a 10 foot pole right now. Uh, you know, they're producing materials at historically high prices. And the last thing they want to do is make 10,000 foot of something that only weighs 600 pounds. You know, so, I mean, uh, you know, they've just switched their gears and they're only producing the bigger, heavier items that they know that they can turn some coin on right now. Uh, so, I mean, those have been really the only problematic items that we've had, you know, consistently, you know, I mean, we've had some spurts where, you know, some certain colors, painted aluminum sheets, you know, was hard to get a hold of. And then, you know, certain sizes and some larger diameter 4130, uh, you know, uh, tubing, chrome molly tubing. Uh, but you know, we've, we've weathered those storms. I mean, we've, you know, I mean, I, I got my ear to the ground in 50 different directions. If somebody tells me that they've only got 5,000 foot on the floor and that's all they're going to have for six months, we can guarantee them about the 5,000 foot that they got, uh, you know, just to ensure that, you know, our, our customers and, you know, our racers and stuff like that definitely have, you know, our fabricators and such have the material to, to use and to have in the future. I mean, we've just had to, uh, like I said, even if we sit on it a little bit longer, you know, it's, it's peace of mind that we have it on the floor, really, at, at this point, you know. For sure, for sure, man. That's, uh, it's been a crazy world, and, uh, but that's, that's always good to know that, and, and like I said, I see it all the time, that guys looking for stuff, and, and y'all have it. Y'all have it in-house already. Um, and, and as a, as a racer myself, uh, we appreciate the fact that, that guys like you are looking out for the racers and, and keeping that stuff on the floor as much as you can. Cause we know it's, it's definitely tough right now. And, and it's just crazy. It's crazy. But Adam, I want to ask is. you, I want to ask you buddy. So uh, as far as, you know, you said you like going into race shops and stuff. Uh, what is, if any, what is your history in racing? Especially being in Mooresville. Right? There's gotta be something. Come on. <laughs> Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I've, you know, I've got some kin folk that's, you know, big name into the, in the racing industry. You know, I got an uncle, uh, probably know him, Robert G. That's him. Uh, and Robert G and Tony Fur, he's another uncle of mine. And, uh, you know, I grew up with these guys doing a bunch of racing. I myself never really got behind the wheel of a car or anything like that. I've been to, to many a races, you know, uh, you know, Dale senior fan growing up, you know, that was a big uh -huh. to do. You know, uh, Jimmy Johnson was my latest. I know I'll get some dirt on that, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey. but, uh, Jimmy Johnson's good racer, you know, for and, sure. Uh, 
And, uh, and yeah, man, I mean, but I have to say, you know, now that I've gotten a little bit older, I've kind of scaled back a little bit, you know, I mean, uh, I don't go to races often, you know, I've got a, got a son, uh, getting of age, man. We're probably going to get him into some karting before too long. Nice. Uh, be a, you know, I know too many people to not do it, you know? Exactly. And, uh, and, uh, I think it would be well rewarding for him as well. Be another one in that uh, Millbridge crew out there, eh? <laughs> yeah, that wild Millbridge crew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's some good stuff out there, man. I, I speaking of carding, that's that's how I started. That's that's what I did to be to begin with. I did that for a long time down in, around this area. Uh, so it's good stuff, good stuff, and uh, it's good to uh, good to see people getting in it with their with their kids and stuff. My son right now, he. Uh, he had never really took much of a liking to driving, but all of a sudden he started. He's thirteen now, and um, and so he's taking a big liking to spotting for me. So I'm like, hey, get as good as you can at it. <laughs> Them guys make good money too. Go stand up on a roof every you weekend. That, that. <laughs> <laughs> they watch a race intently. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's that's cool. That, that's very cool. Very cool. So uh, I know you said you wouldn't end racing as much, but who, who's the man you're pulling for now? Since you gave us those name, other names, who 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 you liking out on the track now? Well, I'm a big old Denny fan, you know. Oh, he's okay. a good guy. So what? Yeah, so, old Hamlin. So, so so did you watch the race Sunday? I did not, man. I actually was uh, coming back from a vacation on Sunday. Oh, well, you was up. doing much better things. Man. Well, I don't know if you heard or not, but Ross Chastain kind of moved him out the way. And Denny Hamlin was not happy about it. <laughs> I could imagine so. But he kind of he kind of put him in the wall. Kind of put him in the wall. Which, which Ross come off track afterwards, apologizing to everybody. He said he had to apologize to the whole field because he hit everything out there. I said, that sounds mm. like a Days of Thunder moment out there. <laughs> it does. It does indeed. <laughs> oh, cool deal, man. Well, good, brother. Well, uh, so what's the uh, what's the hot item right now that you uh finding yourself purchasing a lot of that stock car steel and yeah. aluminum right now? Nah, well, we're coming into the summer months, you know. So, uh, so it you know inherently it, it typically slows down in the racing community. I guess nobody likes welding on these chassis in the heat of the sun. <laughs> no. uh, but. Uh, but I mean, we're still selling a fair amount of your 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 normal stuff, man. Your your forty one thirty tubing, chrome molly tubing. Uh, your your painted aluminum sheets is always a hot commodity. Uh, your frame rail stuff, uh, three by twos and four by threes and the like. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, that's at the end of the day, you know, the core of our business is is you know chassis stuff and frame rail stuff and paint aluminum sheet, sheet metal, you know, I mean, but, you know, it, summer months, like I said, inherently, it, it kind of slows down, you know, we typically try to, to run a little bit leaner into I June, July, August, and then, uh, and then we'll, you know, definitely vamp up our, our purchasing and our stock and, you know, for the colder months, for the off season of racing when everybody's wanting to build their stuff. I got you. One thing I do like to make sure that I let everybody know when, uh, when we're talking about stock car steel and aluminum is we talk everything about obviously he's got the name stock car in there so we're thinking race cars all the time but there's always so mm -hmm. much more to it than just race cars there's so many uh you know backyard fab shops and uh we know y'all even supply some metals for some for, for some aerospace type stuff there absolutely absolutely uh you know your cnc shops your fabricators you know i mean uh aerospace uh and manufacturing as well uh we do a a dabble and, and a good array of that stuff and uh you know with aerospace aerospace you know it's tricky you know it comes with mile long paperwork you sure. know i mean everything's got to be you know just traceability is is your biggest concern you know i mean we got to see what mill it came from and and you know we got to see every movement it had from the mill to us you know, so I mean, sometimes you got to connect some dots <laughs> to show where it came from. So you have full traceability, you know, but uh, but that's one thing that, you know, we've adapted to over time as well was with our material search department, you know, and, and making sure that, you know, traceability is of the utmost importance to stock car steel. 
And, uh, you know, I mean, in the past, I'd say, you know, it was, it was a loose thing, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't asked for a lot, you know, especially in the racing community and stuff like that. But with a lot of these race teams switching over and using some of their, you know, their shops to uh, take on, you know, outside of racing jobs, you know, I mean, they could take on military contracts themselves or aerospace work themselves, you know, I mean, we've had to kind of adapt with the teams per se. And, uh, and and what they're doing, you know, outside of racing, you yeah. know, inside the shops at, you know, RCR and, and Joe Gibbs and, and Hendrick and the like, you know. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's been a learning curve for us, you know, uh, all these years. But, I mean, it's just one of those things you got to do, man. You got to grow with the business, you know, whatever, whatever way that takes you. And uh, we've done well. We've done well. We've created, you know, a department for, for, traceability you know and, and have hired people for that position and stuff so i mean that just shows growth for us and uh you know but it's tough it's tough you know uh you know handling the array of different business that we do you know i mean because it isn't just you know aluminum and steel you know it's different different alloys in the in in you know in in both aluminum and steel and then we also sell plastics as well and uh it's just shoot man when you're dealing with this many things you know and trying to get them all under one roof you know together <laughs> to have and sell and make sure everybody's got it man it's tricky you know but we've got a real good team uh, our sales team man if we don't stock it man we you know these guys have done real well you know to to establish relationships with all sorts of suppliers to make sure that we can source the material, you know, uh, for you, even if you just got to bring it in, you know, it usually takes us a couple of days, maybe sometimes, you know, a week or two, uh, you know, or sometimes might have to wait a long time just cause they ain't making it right now type situation, you know, but, uh, but we're, we're well at getting you the answer that you need, you know, the alloys specifically the ASTM specs that they need to make or meet, uh, and the conditions that they need to be in, you know? So, I mean, it's, uh, we do, we do well. We do well. <laughs> For sure, buddy. For sure. Well, that is so cool. Well, uh, let everybody know. I know we try to hit it every time we're on here. Let everybody know the best way to find, uh, to talk, to, to reach your sales team up there and find what they're looking for. Uh, you definitely want to uh, either email sales at stockcarsteel.com or call us at our, uh, our local number, 704-664-3044. Uh, and ask for anyone in sales, man, and anybody will get you. That's for sure. That's for sure. And also, uh, be sure to follow them. I know, I know on Facebook for sure. Uh, a lot of times they'll show if you're just looking for some uh, some scrap pieces. Uh, I know y'all have a lot of uh, drop baskets and stuff up there that the guys are always looking for just random stuff around there. So uh, follow them and yeah. always find something around there. Absolutely, man. And that's another thing that's actually kind of evolved. Uh, at stock car still as well, man, we were good at throwing a bunch of drops in, in, in these bins, man, that just be, you know, hell to, to, to sort through and oh, yeah. find what you're looking for. You know I mean? Everybody picked from the top of it, you know, the, <laughs> wasn't the bottom stuff, man, wasn't ever getting touched, you know? So, I mean, we've, uh, we've actually built a rack and organized a lot of those drops, uh, to, you know, a more easy fashion of finding that stuff, exactly what you need. And I can tell you, man, it's a great thing to pick from dude, especially from the guys that's only needing a foot or two or, or even less, you know exactly. I mean? Uh, you can guarantee it. It's on one of those drop racks, man. We've definitely got it discounted, you know, and another way to, uh, to, to look up, up, what we have, you know, uh, I'd say our website, uh, www.stockcarsteel.com, you know, it's going to show, you know, 90% of the items that we, we stock on a normal basis. And, uh, and you can even, you know, order direct from that website, man. You don't have to talk to the first person if you don't want to. And, uh, and just order what you need and we'll cut it to size and get it UPS to you. You know, it don't matter where you are, man. I mean, we ship stuff to, to Australia, to Japan, to, to Europe pretty often. And, uh, I mean, dude, I mean, it's just amazing at, at, at what people pay to, to buy a small piece <laughs> of metal and have it shipped around the world. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those things, man. It's one of those things where, uh, where, you know, sometimes we're the only ones with it. That's what I was fixing to say. Hey, when you need it, you just got to have it. Don't matter where it's coming from or, uh, what it's, uh, 
what it's going to cost to get you get it to you. But uh, that's awesome that uh that that you guys have it in stock for them. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, good deal, Adam. Well, we sure appreciate you uh coming on, hanging out with us today, man. I appreciate you having me. All right, man. Well, we hope to hear back from you soon. And uh, this has been this week's edition of Hot Laps. All right. Thanks again to Mr. Adam Richardson for coming on with us there from Stock Car Steel and Aluminum. Ladies and gentlemen, as we say every week, and as you just heard, doesn't matter what metal, alloy, or plastic, as he just said, that you need Give them a call at Stock Car Steel and Aluminum. Go see them. Look online, www.stockcarsteel.com. Check them out. And they, uh, they'll have whatever you need. They'll have anything. Anything. All the materials. Every little thing. <laughs> cool. Uh, also, ladies and gentlemen, head over to SRI Performance, just as he said there, stock car steel, you know, them guys get, making them cars look real good, being structurally safe, all that good stuff. Also, head over to SRI Performance, make it good and fast. That's what you need to do. Go see all our boys over there, guys and gals over there, and uh, get anything you need to make it go fast or all the brakes you need to slow it down fast. Whatever it is, it'll make it fast at doing whatever you need. So head over there, SRI Performance, get you some, get some go fast parts, as I like to call them. The go fast parts. And make you go fast. Exactly. I need some go fast parts. I got some go fast parts on on the Legend car. I got some good old Draco Springs from SRI Performance that they hooked me up with. I appreciate that whole lot on the number thirteen car there we got some purple springs on there and our lucky 13 motorsports ride there so y'all head over to sri performance get you some draco spring get you some pfc brakes get you some whatever else you need i mean they got any and everything from safety related items to to performance related items obviously so y'all head over SRI Performance, get everything and everything you need. Like I always say, there's a Walmart for race cars. But uh, if you want to look online, go online, uh, look up everything you need when you uh, when you get all that that cart that shopping cart on there filled up, as they say. Put in promo code C Bone Ten. That C is in chicken. B O N E one zero. Get you. Self 10% off at time of checkout. Everybody likes 10% off. I like 10% off. I love 10% off. It's a discount. I like cheaper. Cheaper is always nice. Everyone likes cheaper. That's like switching to Geico almost. <laughs> <laughs> Head over to SRI Performance, ladies and gentlemen. Also, while you're there, probably can pick you up some Profab headers. I think a lot of times they'll keep them in stock over there. Uh, if not, call our boys, call, call our buddy Andrew over there at Profab Headers and Exhaust. He gets you hooked up with everything you need. Um, I know them guys heading up to Eldor for the $1 million race this week. They all getting all their stuff that they need uh, ready to go. Getting all them shiny hitters looking good. Heading over. They done picked them up from Profab Hitters and Exhaust. You go do the same thing for any kind of car you got out there. Any race car. They got you. They they probably got them almost in stock ready to go. Um, They just try to keep that money. Well, I say that, but they're fly off the shelves as fast as they can get them done. <laughs> I literally see, see Andrew put up. Or, or I see the guys at Profab put up, uh, you know, they got so many sets of these headers, boom, as soon as they put up, gone. All spoken for. So, um, can't beat that at all. Um, so, you guys head over there. And especially if you got yourself a Earl Ramey racing engine, put some Profab headers on it. 
because the Merle Raymond Racing Engines, they like some profab hitters and exhaust. Um, guys, if you need a uh, if you need a good power plant in your ride in your race car, I don't care. You driving crate class, if you driving supers, if you driving limiteds, whoever, whatever you driving modifieds, um, whatever you driving. Give Earl Ramey a call and uh, get him to hook you up with a new Earl Ramey racing engine or, you know, even a rebuild on on what you got. It'll bring out the most horsepower that you can. He's Earl's been in it for many, many, many years, um, and he knows what he's doing. So head over to Earl Ramey Racing Engines. Get yourself some power under your hood. Wait there, get you some time on that chassis dyno to got. See how much power that thing can put out with all your components on your car. How much you think the legend car put out on that dyno? You, you think I can get three hundred? Three hundred. I wish it <laughs> three hundred horsepower have a legend car. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> be nice. I'm call up. We're gonna put some secret stuff on there and get three hundred <laughs> horsepower. If I had another 30 horsepower on her, I couldn't keep the wheels on her now. Uh, I'd be tough. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, guys, head over there. Get yourself some time on this chassis dyno. And, uh, and he'll see you. Tell, tell him, tell him we sent you. Tell him we sent you. He might slap you upside the head or something. <laughs> I don't know. But tell him we sent you anyway. <laughs> Oh, anyway, so what you doing this week, Lane? Not much. Why not? Uh, I don't know. Don't know? I don't know. Probably going to go swimming. You go swimming? Go go swimming. You done went swimming a few times, ain't you? Mm Mm-hmm. But swimming can be a fun activity anytime. It can. It can be a fun activity. It keeps you uh, in shape, I guess. Mm Mm-hmm. Because there's no gravity to pull you down, so it's a better exercise. Well, it's just better for your joints. True. So you're going to me, Miles, go swim? Yes, sir. Or yes, sir. <laughs> what was that? Uh, well, fortunately, we ain't got a whole lot of work to do on our race car this week. So that's pretty pretty straight from last week. Need to check a few things on it, go over all the bolts and stuff. We'll be ready to go. To uh to Dylan this week after coming out from Florence Motor Speedway this past Saturday, but uh ladies and gentlemen uh let's go to the phone to uh talk to one of the winners from Florence Motor Speedway this past Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, on the phone now, like I just said, coming off a win this past weekend at Florence Motor Speedway, Mr. Brandon Lee. What is going on, Brandon? What's going on, man? It's going good. I appreciate you having me on the show tonight. Uh, yeah, we picked up the win this weekend. I'm grateful for that, and I appreciate you having me on the show. Not a problem, man. And I thought I thought it was pretty cool. Look at look on your Facebook stuff. Come off one weekend, you graduate, and next weekend you're in Victor Lane. That's that's two good places to be, man. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty special, you know, to graduate, and then the next week we won. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that's good places to be. That's what I'm talking about. Well, cool, man. Well, that's uh, well, I, uh, and I didn't say it right in, but you uh, you run in the uh, Charger series or Charger class over there at Florence, and uh, so uh, but tell us a little bit about you. Introduce yourself and um, and, and let us know uh, where you're from and and and, and that, all that good stuff. Yeah, man. My name is Brendan Lee. Um, I'm from Hartsville, South Carolina. Uh, I just graduated from Hartsville High School. Um, I run a limited charger deal um down at florence um we've been doing that we've probably ran eight or nine races now we raced a little bit last year um we picked up a win at the end of the year when the car store came um we've been we've been working hard this year man we we tried to run we were planning to run the full year at florence and um earlier in the year we had to miss two races um but we've been working hard it's been tough with these tires man it, there ain't no good scuffs out there, and we've just been trying to work with what we got with these older tires, and it's been tough. But um, luckily, last night we were able to put something together, and um, you know, 
came on strong there about lap 15, so we were able to pull it off. So, um, but yeah, I started out at Dillon. Um, we ran some banger stuff over there, some U car. Um, we did that probably 15 or 20 races, and then we moved on up to the Charger Class at Florence. So okay. we're gonna keep running. Keep running over there for a little bit, and we'll just see where it takes us. I got you there. So how old were you when you first started racing? Oh, um, I first started racing when I was 14. Okay. Um, I raced 14, 15, and uh, uh, when I turned 16, we took a little time off when we got our late model, our Charger car, and right. worked, on it, worked on it for about half a year to a year, just getting it ready and practicing and practicing. And then um, when I was 17, we, we uh, started over at Florence, so. Uh, well, cool, man. Good deal. Yeah, sir. good deal. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that race the other night because I'm gonna tell you, that was a uh, that was actually the one race that I was able to walk up there and and watch all of. For some reason, I don't know why I could ever get up to any of the other ones. Uh, I was running the legend cars over there, and you talk about tires, and man, we having the same problems. We can't even get scuffs. I'm running on a set of tires right now. It's over a year old, but um, but. Man, that was a good race. I mean, you, you yourself were kind of back and forth from, you know, third, fourth, um, then all the way up to the lead. And, I mean, it was just – it was good, strong racing there at the front of that field for sure. Yeah, man. Um, Like you said, with the tires, we've been fighting them just bad, bad old scuff. Nobody wants to get rid of nothing no more. So, And it, that's understandable. You know, everybody holding on to what they got. So – we're making do with with the old tires, but um, yeah, we qualified fourth. Um, I didn't really think I had much for the leader. I didn't think I had much for Rick there. Um, we fired off like the first ten laps or so, and we were bouncing third and fourth. And then, you know, about lap fifteen, like I said, the car just kind of came on, and we were able to. Luckily, we had a green flag run there towards the end, and we were able to make something work. Um, I actually, when I first started going to the track, I I started going with Rick. Um, he's taught me a lot and I've, I've helped him out a lot, um, at the racetrack. And so that, that was pretty cool. I've been, I've been dreaming of that day for a while to be able to race with him for the lead at Florence and race for the win. That, that was pretty cool. Um, I just, I, we've been working hard to get to this point and be able to have something right there at the end and make it late charge and, and get the win. That was pretty special, man. Yeah. That was some, uh, that was some good door to door racing y'all were putting on there and, uh, for for many laps actually uh you know you setting up the pass to to get under him because you, you could tell you had that little bit on him it just took you a little while to get under him and uh once you did like i said it was some good close racing man and uh couldn't couldn't ask for anything better than that and then after you got by you kind of uh, kind of checked on out a little bit so that was that was pretty impressive man yeah man rick rick's real good at florence he's got a lot of laps over there he was he was doing good hitting his marks. I was trying to set up a pass there, and I was finally able to get under him. And then uh, after I passed him, we were able to check out a little bit. Um, like I said, the car came on pretty good, so it was a good win for sure. Good hard racing. Well, good deal, man. Cool, man. Well, uh, who all was helping you out on that car this year? Yeah, man, uh, I got a few people I need to thank. Um, first, I want to thank my sponsors, Browns RV, uh, 212 Motors, DSI Metals, Hub Entertainment, Grant's Flooring and Butler's Diesel. Um, they've been pretty good to us this year, helping us out. I um, also want to thank my dad, uh, Mason and Hunter. They help, they help me a lot. My dad does a lot for me, and Mason and Hunter helps out at the track. Um, I also want to thank Greg Peterson. We've been working with him this year, trying to get this thing dialed in, and um, he's done us really good um, working with us and helping us. We're still learning. We're young. We, we don't got much experience um, racing in this class, but um, we're making do, and we're just trying to get better, man. I appreciate all of them helping us out. For sure, and uh, and, and Greg knows the stuff on him too. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I've been over he's there really with. Good. Yeah, I've been over there with him when he's been over there with Chad Webster, my buddy, and them over there. So, uh, they know their stuff on him. But it looks like you, uh, lo looks like you catching on pretty pretty good, man. <laughs> to uh, like you just said, to be able to uh, put a pass on Ricky there and. Uh, and at Florence, because like you said, he's got a lot of laps around that place. He knows that place pretty good, and um, he looks like y'all got a good handle on it, buddy. Oh yeah, we like I said, Greg's real good. He's been working with us, and uh, be able to do it, race race it out right there at the end with Rick. That was real special, man. Well, good deal, man. Well, what's up next for you? 
Um, I think June 18th in two weeks, um, Florence runs again, so we'll probably do that. We're going to try and see if we can find a little bit more speed in this thing and be ready to go back in two weeks. So that's the plan. I hear you, man. You going to uh, – I know you said you're going to try to run Florence stuff. you going to try to move around anywhere else. you going to try to get that thing dialed in there good at Florence before you start moving around. Yeah, um, I enjoy racing at Florence. It's actually my home track. It's about 20 minutes away. So uh, right. it wor- works out pretty good. You know, I enjoy racing over there. Um, I- I'd like to get a few more wins under my belt before we decided to do anything else. I know we've been debating some limited stuff um maybe a little um late model at dylan um we've been bouncing around a few ideas but i think for right now we'll probably just stick it stick over at florence and uh, see if we can pick up a few more wins and then we'll just see where that takes us good deal man well cool good deal well man i sure appreciate you uh coming on and hanging out with us tonight man and uh like i said congratulations on that win and uh I, i hope we see you back over there next time in victory lane again man yeah, man, that'd be awesome. I appreciate you having me on the show. All right, buddy. Well, you have a good one. All right, thank you, man. See you, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, Mister Brandon Lee. Congratulations again on his win in the Charger Division at Florence Motor Speedway this past week. Appreciate him coming on here and hanging out with us, and uh, hope to have him back on soon talking about some more wins. But anyway, I have my lovely wife, Kayla, back over here with me now. Hello. What are you doing? Well, I just got done walking 45 minutes with the baby. The baby. Well, he's he's my baby. But now we're just kind of chilling out at the house. At the house? At the house. <laughs> was it hot outside? Oh, my gosh. Yes. It was horrible. Why? Well, because I was walking for that long. Now, if I had somebody pushing me like I was pushing Jackson, I'd be good to go. Oh. Well, you you ought to be getting more used to being outside. You're coming to more racetracks nowadays. I am. I am. I'm getting used to being a racing wife. So, How's that? It's fun. <laughs> Don't lie. Um, I mean, it's not necessarily first thing I want to do but I support you and I like going to seeing you run so Uh all right so after watching this this past Saturday night Mm -hmm. at Florence Motor Speedway what's your what's your assessment um need to go faster (laughs) Uh oh well thank you (laughs) no you've actually done pretty good for you know just now getting the car to where it needs to be so um right out the gate you've been hitting like fourth and fifth place so i mean you're right behind the ones that are up front with all brand new things the ones i need to be in front of yeah (laughs) yeah but you're getting there you're making Uh progress (laughs) oh did you have fun at track i did um typically me and your mama are besties so it's nice having her out there and the kids and everything, having that family time. And um, Landon really seems to be getting into his role as spotter. And so he's even talking about, well, I think Papa mostly got him on the Bandoleros train uh-huh. bandwagon, I should say. So I think he's kind of interested in racing that now. So I might, I might be a racing mama soon as well as a racing wife. Now who knows? Who knows? Well, at least I think I think Jackson has gotten where he, I guess, kind of likes it out there. He, he watches does. some of the races. Yeah, he will. Um, typically, in that kind of setting, you know, we typically give him like a device or something to kind of hone in his sensory issues but every now and again he puts it down and he focuses on the racing so i think the more we go out there and he's a part of it he'll start getting into it more and maybe he'll start racing one day who knows who knows who knows who knows i don't know so i guess we'll be back at dylan motor speedway this weekend i think yeah i think so 
Yeah. Which, which which one do you like better? You like going to Dillon or you like going to Florence better? Um. Well, Florence because it's not so far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, I just like being with you and family, and that's kind of the highlight of me going. Oh. Oh, isn't that sweet? I am sweet. <laughs> I'm sweet as pie, baby. Y'all here on here. <laughs> It'd be totally different once this. <laughs> I, I, I now, don't call me out now. You better hush. <laughs> 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 anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank MPM, McAllister Precision Marketing, coming on board with us this year. Uh, if you are looking to advance your career in the racing industry, be sure to get up with Tanya over there at MPM, and she can definitely have you pointed in the right direction to, to, to like I said, advance your career, to get in front of those sponsors that you are needing to be in front of, to be racing. Uh, she, uh, she even knows all these racetrack promoters, knows the series, knows everything. She'll put you where she thinks you need to be. She'll probably greatly suggest that to you to get you in front of the best, the best eyes to be in front of. So, if you're looking to move up in whatever rank you are in, looking to uh, add some sponsorship, you know, to your racing program, be sure to head over to MPM, talk with Tanya, marketwithmpm.com, and she'll get you hooked up. Tell her we sent you. So, anyway, how's your week? So far, how was your birthday? We didn't. We, we talked about man land. Talked a little bit about yeah. it on here earlier. I and mean, since our last podcast, you had a birthday. I did. You're getting old. You're always older than me, babe. No, nope, we're the same age right now. It won't last long. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. Um, it was my choice to pick. I'm a twin, so we kind of rotate what we do each year, and. I just, instead of going out and all that stuff, I just wanted something a little bit more low-key with the family. And so we went over to my sister's house and uh, had takeout and just had good family time. And then the day after, I went and spent it with my adopted parents. Adopted? Well, Rosie and Randy. Yeah. <laughs> adopted? You're, yeah, they kind of adopted me, so... <laughs> I'm theirs. It'd be more so, in-laws, but okay, we'll go to adopted. Well, they're basically my parents. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we went over there and ate over there with them, and I got I spoiled. Cooked, we cooked you some wonderful ribs. You did. You did. They were really good. Um, Put them in the, the pellet cooker, smoker, mm-hmm. slash grill. Them things was on time. Yeah, they really were. Um, and Somebody then I don't even like ribs. Yeah, I'm I'm not typically a rib girl, but um, but I was getting down on some ribs that day. You didn't even know there was bones in them because you grab them, they fall out. Yeah, yeah, but um, but yeah, and then I got spoiled with my birthday presents, and it was a good time. It was a good birthday, and can't wait for the next one. <laughs> Is that so? Mm-hmm. Well, I got one. Next Monday. Yep, you do. You're getting old, babe. Yeah. <laughs> I, <am>. <laughs> I feel it every day. <laughs> Especially now it. that you're racing. No, that, that don't bother no? me too much. I don't know. I don't. These bother me a whole lot less than go-karts did. Mm. Go-karts, when I was even younger, them things beat you up. Yeah. These ain't near as bad. Well, that's good. I can I can move the day after. <laughs> yeah, well, you kind of have to. <laughs> Yeah, especially when you ain't get home till well, I probably didn't, uh, I don't know, what time did I go to bed? It was almost 2 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I had to get up. We went to church. Yes, we Sunday. did. Sunday, I played some guitar. and. Yep. Then I had to go DJ a graduation party. Yeah, so. Yeah, and I took the kids to my mom and dad's for a swim day and... Had a good time there and came home. We had a movie night. 
the movie. Well, series. Like series. Yes, yeah. And being out of his home all day, we have watched it all day long. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, a few years behind, which I kind of like starting a few years behind on a series because then you can, I hate having to wait a week to catch up on something. Mm-hmm. If I want to watch it, I just want to watch episode after episode after episode when I want to watch it. Yeah. So we're we're watching uh, Stranger Things. Yeah. We're, what, like four seasons behind? We're on season two now. No, we're on season three. We just started season three. Yeah. And what season are they on? Uh, four. I think the part two of season four is supposed to start next month. So, yeah, we're a little behind still. That's all right. We ain't far. But, uh, so, I don't know. It seems all right. <laughs> um, it's not racing, so it's no, not. No, it's racing. not that. <laughs> it's not even that. It's just, I don't know if y'all watch Stranger Things. If you have it, it's decent. It's, it's about kids more than anything. I say kids. They're, what, middle school age-ish? Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's just some extraterrestrial type stuff. Not really aliens. It is aliens, but it ain't aliens. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I still ain't figured out what it is. Through, through, we watched through season three. I don't know what this thing I is. I don't know, but it's got a killer soundtrack. It's got some. It's based in the eighties. Eighty four mm-hmm. was the year they were graduating on there. So it's based in the eighties. So it's got decent music, some cool cars on there. But I just. I don't know. It just seems like the same stuff over yeah. and over and over and over and over to me. Well, but it's nice, though, because we don't really have time to really sit back and watch anything together because our schedules are so crazy. So I've at least been enjoying watching it. Oh, well, oh, ain't that nice. Caught me on a good day. <laughs> All right. So I cooked reels for your birthday. What will what, yeah. what I get for mine? Um, I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. I need to report, record a podcast. Might have to record it that Sunday. Yeah. Well, we'll figure it out, and whatever it is, it's going to be a good supper, so we'll celebrate you. I'll take ribs. I like ribs. <laughs> All right, we'll get that's, you some ribs. My, uh, I, I like some ribs, especially on the on the smoker. Mm-hmm. Oh, but anyway, everybody, well, I reckon that's about all for this week. Uh, heard from cool people this week in racing. Um, like I said, we'll be at Dillon Motor Speedway Saturday, or that is a plan anyway. Um, running with the legend car, see if we can, see if we can get, we've, we got a string of two top fives going on right now, see if we can back it up with, I'm hoping, a top three is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping I'm hoping for a win. Yeah. But if I can get a top three, I'll feel better about it. I feel like we're going more in the right direction. Yeah. I think that has a lot to do with new tires and new tires and things like that. So Yeah, it does, but maybe we can get what we got running. Supposedly there's some tires coming out this week or next week or something like that, but I don't I got a feeling we won't get dibs at them. <laughs> Probably so. not. Well, that's all right. Who knows? But anyway, guys, want to thank as always SRI Performance, Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, Earl Ramey Racing Engines, RK Motorsports Consulting, uh, Profab Headers and Exhaust, MPM Marketing. Also, want to thank Ford Bike Apparel. Y'all go check out Ford Bike. Get you some. It's, it is. It is into the summer months. Go get some new t-shirts from them. You will appreciate it. Good looking t-shirts. Uh, good looking anything's hats. Um, anything you want for sure. Uh, apparel wise, they got it. Uh, so y'all go check out Ford Bike Apparel. Get you some today. And uh, while you at it, check out. Our buddy Cole trained Vander Hyden in the Ford Bite 305 Sprint car. He is uh, making a name for himself already in the Sprint car. First year, rookie year, and already got a win under his belt. And a lot of lot of good finishes already. So, y'all go uh, 
check check him out for sure. Um, also, want to thank Checkered. Checkered is the race hub. It is a social media for racing. So y'all go check out Checkered. Uh, we're on there. A bunch of our friends are on there. So you, you get on there too. But uh, I reckon that's about it. You got anything else? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't figure you did. No. All right, guys. We appreciate y'all coming on and appreciate uh, Adam coming on here for our hot lap segment. Also, Brandon coming on, checking out with us after his win at Florence Motor Speedway. And uh, But anyway, guys, uh, I reckon I'd do it for this week. Um, we'll see you next week. Bye.